Hindustani is the lingua franca of northern India and Pakistan, and through its two standardized registers, Hindi and Urdu, an official language of India and Pakistan. Phonological differences between the two standards are minimal. Vowels Hindustani natively possesses a symmetrical ten-vowel system. The vowels are always short in length, while the vowels i, u, e, o are always considered long, in addition to an eleventh vowel, ash, which is found in English loanwords, but see the details below. Topic <laughs> Vowel Schwa is a short vowel which vanishes to nothing at unstressed position. Is often realized more open than mid, i.e. is near open. Topic Vowel. The open back vowel is transcribed in IPA by either a or. Topic Vowels. I U. Among the close vowels, what in Sanskrit are thought to have been primarily distinctions of vowel length that is, I tilde I, and, U tilde U, have become in Hindustani distinctions of quality, or length accompanied by quality that is, tilde I, and, tilde U. The historical opposition of length in the close vowels has been neutralized in word final position, for example Sanskrit loans sakti, sakti shakti energy and vastu, vastu wasta item are, kate I, and, stu, not asterisk, kate, and asterisk, saint. Topic. Vowels The vowel represented graphically as i a romanized as i has been variously transcribed as or ash. Among sources for this article, Ohala 1999, pictured to the right, uses, while Shapiro 2003-258 and Masika 1991-110 use ash. Furthermore, an eleventh vowel, ash, is found in English loanwords, such as, b ash, bat. Hereafter, i a romanized as i will be represented as to distinguish it from, ash, the latter. Despite this, the Hindustani vowel system is quite similar to that of English, in contrast to the consonants. In addition, occurs as a conditioned allophone of, schwa, in proximity to, if and only if the, is surrounded on both sides by two schwas, and is realized as separate vowel. For example, in kahana, k, na, kahana kana to say, the, is surrounded on both sides by schwa, hence both the schwas will become fronted to short, giving the pronunciation, na. Syncopation of phonemic middle schwa can further occur to give, k, na. The fronting also occurs in word final, presumably because a lone consonant carries an unpronounced schwa. Hence, kaha, k, kaha ka se, becomes, kh, in actual pronunciation. However, the fronting of schwa does not occur in words with a schwa only on one side of the such as kahani, ka ni, kahani kani a story or bahar, ba ar, bahara bar outside. Vowels The vowel occurs in proximity to if the is surrounded by one of the sides by a schwa and on other side by a round vowel. It differs from the vowel in that it is a short vowel. For example, in bau, bt, the is surrounded on one side by a schwa and a round vowel on the other side. One or both of the schwas will become giving the pronunciation bt. <laughs> Nasalization of vowels As in French and Portuguese, there are nasalized vowels in Hindustani. There is disagreement over the issue of the nature of nasalization barring English loaned a which is never nasalized. Masika 1991-117 presents four differing viewpoints. There are no asterisk e and asterisk o possibly because of the effect of nasalization on vowel quality. There is phonemic nasalization of all vowels. All vowel nasalization is predictable i.e. allophonic. 
Nasalized long vowel phonemes, O tilde, occur word finally and before voiceless stops. Instances of nasalized short vowels and of nasalized long vowels before voiced stops, the latter, presumably because of a deleted nasal consonant, are allophonic. Masika supports this last view. Consonants Hindustani has a core set of 28 consonants inherited from earlier Indo-Aryan. Supplementing these are two consonants that are internal developments in specific word medial contexts, and seven consonants originally found in loan words, whose expression is dependent on factors such as status class, education, etc. and cultural register modern standard Hindi versus Urdu. Most native consonants may occur geminate, doubled in length, exceptions are, b Geminate consonants are always medial and preceded by one of the interior vowels that is, or They all occur monomorphemically except, which occurs only in a few Sanskrit loans where a morpheme boundary could be posited in between, e.g., n plus i l, for nisal ni l without shame, for the English speaker. A notable feature of the Hindustani consonants is that there is a four-way distinction of phonation among plosives, rather than the two-way distinction found in English. The phonations are Tenuous, as p, which is like p in English spin. Voiced, as b, which is like b in English bin. Aspirated, as p, which is like p in English pin, and murmured, as b, the last is commonly called voiced aspirate, though Shapiro notes that Evidence from experimental phonetics, however, has demonstrated that the two types of sounds involve two distinct types of voicing and release mechanisms. The series of so-called voice aspirates should now properly be considered to involve the voicing mechanism of murmur, in which the air flow passes through an aperture between the arytenoid cotyledges, as opposed to passing between the ligamental vocal bands. The murmured consonants are believed to be a reflex of murmured consonants in Proto-Indo-European, a phonation that is absent in all branches of the Indo-European family except Indo-Aryan and Armenian. Notes marginal and non-universal phonemes are in parentheses. Is lateral for some speakers. Is post-velar, stops in final position are not released. Varies freely with v, and can also be pronounced w. Can surface as a trill, r, mostly in word initial and syllable final positions, and geminate, is always a trill, e.g. zara, za, zara draw little, versus well trilled zara, zara, zara dhr particle. This happens in loanwords of Arabic and Persian origin. The palatal and velar nasals occur only in consonant clusters, where each nasal is followed by a homorganic stop, as an allophone of a nasal vowel followed by a stop, and in Sanskrit loanwords. There are murmured sonorants, l, m, n, but these are considered to be consonant clusters with in the analysis adopted by Ohala 1999. The fricative in Hindustani is typically voiced as especially when surrounded by vowels, but there is no phonemic difference between this voiceless fricative and its voiced counterpart Hindustani's ancestor Sanskrit has such a phonemic distinction. Hindustani also has a phonemic difference between the dental plosives and the so-called retroflex plosives. The dental plosives in Hindustani are laminal denti alveolar as in Spanish, and the tongue tip must be well in contact with the back of the upper front teeth. The retroflex series is not purely retroflex, it actually has an apico-postalveolar also described as apico-pre-palatal articulation, and sometimes in words such as tuta, u a, tuta u a broken it even becomes alveolar. In some Indo-Aryan languages, the plosives, and the flaps, are allophones in complementary distribution, with the former occurring in initial, geminate and postnasal positions and the latter occurring in intervocalic and final positions. However, in standard Hindi they contrast in similar positions, as in Niraj Niraja nai bird versus Nadar Nadara nr fearless. <laughs> Allophony of V and W V and W are allophones in Hindustani. These are distinct phonemes in English, but both are allophones of the phoneme in Hindustani written va in Hindi or w in Urdu, especially in loanwords of Arabic and Persian origin. More specifically, they are conditional allophones, i.e. rules apply on whether va is pronounced as v or w depending on context. 
Native Hindi speakers pronounce va as v in vrat, vrata wort vow and w in pakwan, pakavana parkwan food dish, treating them as a single phoneme and without being aware of the allophonic distinctions, though these are apparent to native English speakers. The rule is that the consonant is pronounced as semivowel w in onglide position, i.e. between an onset consonant and a following vowel, however, the allophone phenomenon becomes obvious when speakers switch languages. When speakers of other languages that have a distinction between v and w speak Hindustani, they might pronounce va w in vrat vrata word as w, i.e. as wat instead of the correct vt. This results in an intelligibility problem because wat can easily be confused for orat or at a word t, which means woman, instead of vow in Hindustani. Similarly, Hindustani speakers might unconsciously apply their native allophony rules to English words, pronouncing war w, as v or advance dvns, as dwns, which can result in intelligibility problems with native English speakers. In some situations, the allophony is non conditional, i.e., the speaker can choose v, w or an intermediate sound based on personal habit and preference, and still be perfectly intelligible. This includes words such as advaita advaita adwit which can be pronounced equally correctly as dwt or dvt. Topic: <laughs> External borrowing. Loanwords from Sanskrit reintroduced into formal modern standard Hindi. In casual speech it is usually replaced by n it does not occur initially and has a nasalized flap as a common allophone. Loanwords from Persian, including some words which Persian itself borrowed from Arabic or Turkish, introduced five consonants: f, z, q, x. Being Persian in origin, these are seen as a defining feature of Urdu, although these sounds officially exist in Hindi and modified Devanagari characters are available to represent them. Among these, f, z, also found in English and Portuguese loanwords, are now considered well established in Hindi. Indeed, f, appears to be encroaching upon and replacing p, even in native non-Persian, non-English Hindi words, as happened in Greek with phi. This p, to, f, shift also occasionally occurs in Urdu. The other three Persian loans, q, x, are still considered to fall under the domain of Urdu, and are also used by many Hindi speakers, however, some Hindi speakers assimilate these sounds to k, k, respectively. The sibilant is found in loanwords from all sources English, Persian, Sanskrit and is well established. The failure to maintain f, z by some Hindi speakers often non-urban speakers who confuse them with p, d, s is considered non-standard. Yet these same speakers, having a Sanskritic education, may hyperformally uphold and In contrast, for native speakers of Urdu, the maintenance of f, z is not commensurate with education and sophistication, but is characteristic of all social levels. The sibliant is very rare and is found in loanwords from Persian and English and is considered to fall under the domain of Urdu and although it is officially present in Hindi, many speakers of Hindi assimilate it to z or d. Being the main sources from which Hindustani draws its higher, learned terms English, Sanskrit, Arabic, and to a lesser extent Persian provide loanwords with a rich array of consonant clusters. The introduction of these clusters into the language contravenes a historical tendency within its native core vocabulary to eliminate clusters through processes such as cluster reduction and apenthesis. Schmidt 2003 lists distinctively Sanskrit, Hindi biconsonantal clusters of initial, k, k, street, s, sn, nj, and final, t, nj, lj, dj, j, and distinctively Perso-Arabic, Urdu biconsonantal clusters of final per foot, f, mount, m, ms, kl, tl, bl, sl, tm, lm, m, Topic. Suprasegmental features Hindustani has a stress accent, but it is not as important as in English. To predict stress placement, the concept of syllable weight is needed. A light syllable one mora ends in a short vowel v a heavy syllable two moras ends in a long vowel a, i, u, e, o, or in a short vowel and a consonant v, 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 c, an extra heavy syllable three moras ends in a long vowel and a consonant, or a short vowel and two consonants, vvc, vcc stress is on the heaviest syllable of the word, and in the event of a tie, on the last such syllable. 
If all syllables are light, the penultimate is stressed. However, the final mora of the word is ignored when making this assignment Hussein 1997 or, equivalently, the final syllable is stressed either if it is extra heavy, and there is no other extra heavy syllable in the word or if it is heavy, and there is no other heavy or extra heavy syllable in the word. For example, with the ignored mora in parentheses, less than pre greater than slash pre greater than ka dot re dot dot re tp k l less than pre greater than slash pre greater than ox dot d dot ba dot ni less than pre greater than slash pre greater than re z dot a dot re s m t q's m t ba r less than pre greater than slash pre greater than row dot za dot na less than pre greater than slash pre greater than r dot ka dot ja r o z a r a s ma n da h tilde s m a tilde da h k d r r p a d na b s ba b m s l ma n q la b P R R D A R content words in Hindustani normally begin on a low pitch, followed by a rise in pitch. Strictly speaking, Hindustani, like most other Indian languages, is rather a syllable timed language. The schwa has a strong tendency to vanish into nothing syncopated if its syllable is unaccented. See also IPA vowel chart with audio IPA pulmonic consonant chart with audio IPA chart vowels and consonants 2015 PDF file Schwa deletion in Indo-Aryan languages